Section 13.8 is called motor under load. So um, let's go back now and, and let's, uh, and of course the load is ultimately coupled to the rotor, right? Uh, there's uh, uh, the construction of the motor is such that, you know, there's uh, uh, bearings and the a motor shaft is attached to this rotor and, you know, we can put pulleys or, or gears or whatever it is that we're, we're trying to drive uh, from the output of the motor. We couple that to the actual rotor. So initially we looked at things in terms of, um, you know, no load conditions. And then what happens when we place this motor uh, under load? Now, let's say that, you know, we get the motor up to speed, right? We get it up to speed and it's rotating and it's, it's running at its rated conditions. And then we incorporate a load into the, the equation. Let's, let's look at that and, and talk about how the motor reacts to that. Okay, so again, I've, I've chosen a, a, something for you to look at, but uh, you know, in, 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 and as we talk about this explanation, so here's the rotor, right? And of course, we know that it would have the, you know, the laminated plates, you know, to make this thing, um, you know, basically a solid, hollow, solid, um, you know, device, if that makes any sense. But you know, the middle of it is, you know, uh, hollow. And, and so anyway, uh, from the from the plates, you know, and then they're stacked in there as such. But, you know, and, and out here, you know, ultimately there is a, a motor shaft. And here's where we couple loads to this um, machine. Okay. So initially, say it's running at no load. And this equation, again, is sort of cemented into our brain. And so uh, we apply mechanical load to the shaft. All right, so it's running, it's up at running at, at no load, and then we apply a load to the shaft. The motor will slow down, okay? Well, when the motor slows down, the relative speed between the, uh, the magnetic field and the uh, rotor bars is going to increase, right? You're gonna cut those bars uh, at a higher rate as the motor slows down. Okay, well, once you uh, start to cut that at a higher rate, the voltage is gonna go up, the current will increase. If the current increases, the torque increases, okay? So in that way, so in that way, the, the, the motor adapts to the load that's coupled to it. And, you know, it says the, the voltage and resulting current in the bars will increase progressively, uh, producing a greater and greater motor torque. How long will this go on? Will the speed continue to drop until the motor comes to a halt? No. The motor and the mechanical load will reach a state of equilibrium when the motor torque is exactly equal to the load torque. When this state is reached, the speed will cease to drop and the motor will turn at a constant speed. It's very important to understand that a motor only turns at a constant speed when its torque is exactly equal to the torque exerted by the mechanical load. This, this moment, this, the moment the state of equilibrium is upset, the motor will, speed will start to change, okay? So, so when the torque of the motor matches the torque of the load, and this goes back to chapter three stuff, um, then you know, you've reached a, uh, a dynamic equilibrium and when that occurs, when that occurs, that dynamic equilibrium, the speed stabilizes. Again, increase the load, slow down the rotor, voltage is gonna increase because of the relative difference, okay? Then at the same time, if the load decreased, the load decreased, the rotor is going to turn faster, so the relative difference there becomes less, and so the torque decreases. So there's that, uh, that interaction that's going on constantly, almost like a, a, a feedback, isn't it? Under normal loads, induction motors run very close to the speed of the magnetic field, to the synchronous speed. Thus at full load, the slip for a large motor, and we're talking very large, a thousand kilowatt motor, uh, is about 0.5% of synchronous speed. Okay, so the slip, the difference between the magnetic field and the rotor field is about 0.05% for large machines. And uh, for smaller machines, like in the 10 kilowatt range, the, uh, uh, the, the slip seldom exceeds 
5%, 5% difference. Okay. Now, the, you know, so, you know, going from no load to full load, you know, the, the you know, looking at the slope of those um, different rated uh, motors. So basically, although there is some variation across here, the, these, these uh, machines are called asynchronous because, you know, there is a difference between the uh, field speed and the rotor speed. So they're not in sync, so they're called asynchronous. But at the same time, you know, motors basically run at a constant speed within a slight variation range. Okay, so that's uh, 13.8 and 13.9 will quantify this uh, slip and slip speed.